Thursday, big games, weird games, weird rotations, unpredictable rotations, fights. It's all here. Let's recap it. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and what's your favorite color? Mine is blue, double D, double die. I'm also the lead fantasy analyst at basketballmonster.com and you can find me on Twitter as always at redrock underscore b-ball, on TikTok at redrock underscore b-ball, and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA and use the code locked on NBA all lowercase for a first deposit match up to $100. Thank you also for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We're free, we're available on all platforms. So all of you guys over there, you ready to double bang? Because I'm ready to accept it. Thumb it up, ring the bell, subscribe, and leave your comments on the video. And of course, go listen to the audio side of things. It's getting nitty gritty-ish, isn't it? We are towards the end of finals week for many of you. First week of the playoffs for some of you. And stuff's just weird. There's a lot of weird stuff going on in the NBA at the moment. So we're going to recap the seven games from Thursday. We're going to cover off a little bit of news that went down and a little bit of news that we need to pay attention to moving forward. And we got the two most, honestly, didn't see it coming at all, the two most surprising things we could have possibly gotten. Jeremy Grant, the Ides of March legend himself, is doubtful for tomorrow with a hamstring strain. I, I was sitting down and I almost fell over. That's how shocked I was. The second one, I went. I got picked back up because I was, I'd fainted. And then I heard the news that Desmond Bain was doubtful tomorrow. I, I could not believe that either. And they didn't even they didn't even chuck out the ankle designation. Saw back for Baino. Now, to the Grizzlies' credit, Jaron Jackson's not on the injury report, so he's going to play against the Spurs. And this was always the risk with Bain. It's very easy to pile on me and when I said, hey, I don't think he's coming back and he's going to be a drop. Very easy to say, you were wrong. Take the owl. What are you doing, you idiot? Very easy to say that. But my point was is that when he does come back, I think there's going to be rust. I think there's going to be game set out. And in the end, I'm not sure if it's going to be worth it. And I'm not sure if it's going to be worth it. In fact, for this week, it very, very clearly wasn't worth it to have Desmond Bain in your lineup. One good game, one disgraceful game, and that is it. It was like a half a game as well, that 24 minutes. Will he play every game moving forward? Almost definitely not. I just don't know what this team does all the time. We didn't get... So Jaron's not on the injury report. Still no Vince Williams, still no Luke Kennard. Basically a lot of the same injuries, except now with that, they've added Bain back onto it for tomorrow. And there's just going to be more nonsense with this team as we move forward all the way through. Just be aware of it. The Celtics are also doing the thing that we knew that they would do. They're load managing their guys again. They play against the Pistons on Friday, the Celtics on Saturday. Drew Holiday has already been ruled out for Friday's game. Both Horford and Porzingis are questionable on Friday. Jason Tatum's questionable. Jalen Brown's questionable. Sam Hauser's in. I, I'm not sure who's going to be in or out, but Hauser, Peyton Pritchard, Luke Cornett, there is a possibility of streaming value across all those guys. The unknown is that who is in, who is out, we don't know. We know that Derek White's not on the injury report, and we know that Holiday's out, so that really does boost Peyton Pritchard there. But this is the end of this really packed-in part of the Celtic schedule. You're not going to get as many of these opportunities, I don't think, although they're so far up, they're probably just going to sit guys randomly anyway. But that is happening on Friday, Saturday. Jalen Johnson out for a week, at least. So obviously, his most improved chances are done. What do you do with Jalen? We'll talk more about it in the Hawks game later on. We'll talk more about the replacements for him, but where are you at? Like, you've got a week left in the season, you drop him. Like, if your season ends week 22, you don't hold on to him. Obviously, open IL slots, you use them. But the open IL slots are great when they're open. But if you've got Jalen and you put him in there today, then someone else gets hurt tomorrow and you need that spot, then you've got to make a decision. Because then in the end, it ends up costing you a bench spot. So while I do love what Jalen's done, in, for some of you, he's not immune to being dropped. That decision can be made just because of where we're at in the season, obviously. What happened across the waiver wire? Who was added? Who wasn't? Or who was dropped? Maybe more to the point. 
The most added players across the waiver wire, Larry Nance Jr., up 24%. Did that work today? Absolutely not, but it wasn't just about that. It's about just getting some extra value in with all of the games that the Pelicans have on the low volume days. And we, he is not going to score huge amounts. And we talked about this in the preview show earlier today, the streaming show, saying that the Pelicans, I think, have got, is it five quality games over the next nine days? And there's like eight teams that have one. Like that's such a big advantage. Like not, he knows five games, he's going to do something that generates more than that one person. And that's not even including the game on Thursday, which obviously was a stinker from Nance. Keon Ellis up 17%. Talk about stinkers. This this does happen at this point of the year. We try these guys and the opportunity looks there, but looks to be there, but doesn't always work. He was up 17%. Justin Champagne, bubbles too. He was up 12%. That didn't work out either. He barely played. But what we do have is a template there in Washington that if Avdir and Kuzma are out again, then we know we go back to Champagne. Juice McBride up 10%. Tom Thibodeau did stick with him in the starting lineup. Interesting. Gigi Jackson up 9 uh, who knows? But the opportunity is clearly there, so I'm, I'm all for that. And then Rashawn Holmes up 6%. If Bagley does come back, then Holmes will be turned into dust. But for now, we're good. For now. A lot of what we're saying is just for now. The most dropped players, all Detroit, basically. Asar Thompson, Isaiah Stewart, they're out for the season. We know that. But then the third most dropped player was Simone Fontecchio, who's out tomorrow, along with old mate Stanley Amude. So who is going to start? Well, one of them is going to be Tosan Evbom1. I'm not that interested in adding Tosan, although he was okay last game. In a 14-team league, there's a little bit there. Do they actually go with Chemezi Metu? Do they start Evan Fournier or Troy Brown? It's going to be one of those ones where you're trying to catch the lightning in the bottle. And Fonteki will come back and, and limit this, and so will Amude, I'm guessing. But like, I don't feel good about Fournier or Brown or Ev Bonwan or Metu. In fact, Metu is probably the best producer out of all those guys. But it might be just a one-game thing. Duncan Robinson down 9%. He's out again. Cool, drop him. Brandon Pajemsi down 8%. Cool, drop him. Grant Williams down 7%. Absolutely drop him. The Hornets have the worst schedule in the NBA over the next 10 days. They barely play. And when they do, it's on the high volume day. So that is very, very obvious, I think. Um, a drop type scenario. We can go straight into the games here. Let's do it. The New Orleans Pelicans and your Orlando Magic. Uh -huh. The Magic win at 121-106. Is your final score in this one? Bad news, though, for the Pelicans. Brandon Ingram hurt his knee after 21 minutes. Didn't look good at all. He had to be helped off the court. Wasn't fully carried, but helped off the court. The only update we have at the moment is he's getting an MRI. Let me just tell you this right now. He's not playing on Friday, right? That's done. They haven't officially ruled him out. I am. I'll officially rule Brandon Ingram out. He won't play on Friday. I would guess that he doesn't play on Sunday. While this is bad news for Ingram, it's bad news for the NBA, it's bad news for the Pelicans. It's bad news if you have Ingram on your fantasy team. We've been talking all of this time about the Pelicans having this great fantasy schedule and saying, yeah, but there's not many guys who are good enough to actually take advantage of it, who are on your waiver wire. Well, maybe this makes someone good enough. Trey Murphy will start, and then Najee Marshall's going to have to play more. He might have to play 26 minutes a night. There's no Dyson Daniels. Deeper leagues, we might want to look at Jose Alvarado, Jordy Hawkins. I don't think it impacts much for Larry Nance. In fact, I'll put this out there now. It might even be a negative for Nance because without Ingram, maybe they have to play Valanciunas more to get more shooting or not more shooting, more, more scoring, more offensive output. So just watch that one. But the value of a Naji Marshall, who was like, eh, I guess we, we go through with five games and get 17 minutes and on, that's enough. He might play 25 a night over the next five quality games they have. I don't know how long Ingram's out. And there's something there that at least opens it up. It's terrible news. It's bad news. We all want... The Pelicans were flying. We loved it. And that happens, doesn't it? Trey Murphy had 21 in 29 minutes. Herbalife had 13, 6, and 5 in 32 with a steal. Zion, only 20 minutes in 20... Uh, yeah, 20 points in 29 minutes. It was a blowout. He had two steals and a block. Continues to look so much better than he has in the past. And we also got more from uh, Christian James McCullum. 18 and 3 in his 34 minutes. We didn't get more from Valentunas. He still only played 18, but that was better than the 18 minutes we got out of Larry Nance. 6 and 5 for JV. 0 and 2 for Nance. Now, Nance did add 3 assists and 2 steals, and he's still more widely available than what Valentunas is, and those games still do count. I am not one of those ones who thinks that the absence of Ingram helps Nance. There was someone go, well, Nance is a power forward. He'll play power forward minutes. I don't really think it works that way. The, the, the guy, to me, is going to be... Najee Marshall, a bit of Geordie Hawkins, more stability and way more minutes for Trey Murphy there as well. Let's go on to the 
Orlando side of things, really hard to take too much judgment here. Jalen Suggsy Suggs had 22 and 28 minutes. We just want him to get, if he got 35 a night, this man will be a top 60 player. He's doing it in the low minutes, but it's just frustrating. Bunkero had a triple-double, 20 and 10, 11 assists, missed both his free throws, but the other stuff's great. And finally, a good game from Franz Wagner, 18, 3 and 3 with two dribbles. Wendell Carter Jr., eh, eight points, six rebounds, three steals and a block is nice. But there's not enough for him every night to consider a must roster. Now, he missed all three of his free throws, and if he hits those three, it looks a lot better. He's a fringe guy to me. Fultz is not a 12-teamer. Mo Wagner had 14 on 100% shooting. This man is an unbelievably efficient center. And then you had Gaz Harris getting hurt, playing only 12 minutes. They said he's fine. But honestly, for fantasy, this does not really matter. Today's episode does really matter because it is brought to you by Price Picks. Price Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with over 3 million members. The easiest and the most exciting way to play as well because it is just you against the numbers. You pick more than or less than two to six individual player stat projections and then, well, you get them right, and then the money gets rolling in. Now, you might have dreams of, you know, saying iconic lines, I'm something of a scientist myself, but that's hard to do. The closest you can get is looking at the Green Goblins over on Price Picks. That, along with Demon Time, the Red Demons, that gives you the big boost on those squares. If you get one of those, you can get up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks on Demon Time. They're even offering Price Picks, the old, old mates over there, injury insurance. So if your bloke gets hurt in the first half, doesn't come back in the second, well, that just gets cancelled out of your entry. doesn't void the whole thing. It doesn't mean that you lose. They're done. They just reset without it and you're good to go. What a novel idea. Maybe they were sick of people groveling for voids in their mentions. I would be. Go to pricefix.com slash locked on and use the code locked on NBA. Or go to pricefix.com slash locked on NBA. Sorry. Use the code locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to $100. That is pricefix.com slash locked on NBA. The code is locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to $100. Pricefix, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Okay, what are we doing now? What's the next one? That was the first game done. We're going to look into the second game. That's a really good spot to go to. It is the Sacramento Kings, the the team that is the most weird, the most annoying, that has the most absolutely baffling losses of anybody in the NBA. They lose to the Washington Wizards. Kyle Kuzma returned. He started over the sandwich. Patrick Baldwin Jr. Then he Avdia also returned. Or well, John Davis moved to the bench, and hopefully we never have to see him again, although we did see him in this one. And the Kings lose to the Wizards. 109-102. The Wizards aren't trying, my guys. I don't know how this team is that bad on back-to-backs, but they are horrendous. Let's talk about Sacramento. Fox, I think, missed his first nine shots. He ended up taking 30 of them and going at 10 of 30. He ended up with 25, 5, and 5 with six steals and five triples, but that field goal was bad. So bonus, 14, 14, and 6. Honestly, Given how well he's been playing, that's actually one of his worst. Well, Leaky Monk had 20 points, a triple one, and four assists. Good. What about Keon Ellis, who's replacing Kevin Herter? If you haven't heard, I did mention this on one of the earlier shows today. Herter has a um, labral tear, shoulder dislocation. They're still assessing treatment and giving timelines. I'll tell you now, he's just he's not coming back in the regular season. Like, let's be fair. We're three and a half weeks away. He's not coming back from a label tear in three and a half weeks. So you can move on from him, and that means Keon Ellis has the opportunity. Today, he had it. He didn't do anything with it. 21 minutes, two points. He did have the steal. And we've talked at length about Ellis saying, if you want steals, this is the man that will give you steals. Usually, it's more than one, but he's not going to be there for everybody. If you're looking for points and threes, that's a terrible stream. If you're looking for steals and some out-of-position blocks, then it's a pretty good one. And he wasn't ideal here, but he did give you one steal. The role, I don't think, is changing. They just got down really big early again. When you're playing the Wizards, that's a laugh. And they went to a little bit more Chris Duarte. The old man had three points in his 19 minutes. So it didn't really work out that well, but he did get some extra playing time. While the pencil, Harrison Barnes. Barnesy. Barnesy had 12 in 28 minutes, 43%. He had two rebounds. He continues to be just annoying. While Keegan Murray was a little bit better. He has 16 points, two blocks, 64%. But the cavalcade of mid continues for the uh, Wizards. Like I said, we had Kuzma and Abdiya return, but Ty Stones was still out. Marvin Bagley was still out. And with Kuzma coming back, that meant that Patrick Baldwin moved to the bench and played nine minutes. Now, Baldwin actually had one of his better games. Six points with a triple one. And I maintain that if he gets this role 
for the rest of the season, if something unbelievable happens, maybe Desmond Baines' back soreness is contagious and Kuzma catches it and Baldwin starts, he will be a 12-team league guy. But when they're playing, he's not. And when Denny Abdi are back, who played 32 minutes, he had 17, 9, and 5. Justin Champagny, who got like 35 minutes the last three games, played 9 and went scoreless. It's just hard to find the minutes every game here. So we need those guys out to see that value. Like at the moment, Rashawn Holmes, 6 points, 16 rebounds. And if he didn't shoot 22%, it'd be a really good line. But if Bagley comes back, do they just split minutes again and then neither of them are useful? Probably. So I'm not going to get over over my skis here. It was interesting that Jared Butler still played 19 minutes. He had two steals and eight points. We keep that just on the back burner. While the uh, the swimmer, Jordan Poole, 14 points in 36 minutes, three steals. Bad assist, but at least he hit his free throws. Eh, all right, cool. Speaking of hitting free throws, what's wrong with Corey Kispert? Why can't the man do it anymore? 15 points, cool. 67% shooting. Oh, now, now we're looking all right, aren't we? Only one three? Bro, just take threes. Definitely don't take free throws because he can't hit them. Two of six. Why does this man go at like 65% from the line? I still think that we do roster him. He's ahead of Champagne, very obviously, in the pecking order with Bill Alau for the season. But he's still extraordinarily limited. He's a points and usually threes guy, and you would hope someone that gives you free throws. But uh, apparently apparently not. Apparently that's not in our old uh, our wheelhouse at the moment in the uh, Kispert family. Let's go. Game three, Brooklyn. Up against the Milwaukee Bucks, a change in the lineup here for the Bucks, and for the Nets. In fact, Dorian Finney-Smith was out. Cam Johnson started, and for the Bucks, Chris Middleton was resting on the second half of a back-to-back, and the big fella returned, Yanni Antetokounmpo, after missing the last two games. So, what happened? Well, the Bucks win it. It was closer than you might have thought. One fifteen, one o eight was the final score in this one. As I just try and find the right thing. So let's look at how old mate. Uh, Dennis Schroeder went for the Brooklyn Nets. 34 minutes, 5 points. Cool. 9 assists. That's good. 22% shooting. Schroeder continues to get good minutes and continues to do nothing with them. Now You probably you can't really move on from him. But this man needs so much stuff to go right to be even close to useful. He's 115th over the last two weeks in 35 minutes. Cam Thomas was fine. 21, 6, and 4. No threes, no steals, no blocks. These, these are his downfall areas. Shooting was okay, but yeah, pretty good, pretty good. And Cam Johnson got the minutes way up there. So he obviously wasn't on a limit. They were just keeping him at 22 a night, or 24 a night. Because he played 35 here, Cameron. 16, 8, and 4 with four triples, good numbers. Does he keep that role when Finney Smith returns? Because that's obviously a 12-team line. 26 is not, 26 minutes is not enough for him. While Mikael Bridges continues to be annoying, this was better. 24 points, six triples, six rebounds. Didn't take a single free throw, had just two assists. At least that nudges him back inside the top 130 over the last two weeks. While we thought that there was a big chance that Claxton would miss. He played 20 minutes the game before. He missed shoot around, missed practice with an illness. He ends up playing 34 minutes, had 22 and 9 with two steals. Okay, uh, what, good good for him. Well, at least we got something out of Dayron Sharp as a streamer. If we didn't get the big minutes that we hoped for. Oh, hang on. I'm just being told that they decided to DNP him after him, he got 28 minutes the game before. For what reason? I have no idea. Dayron Sharp got a flat DNP. You can't plan for that. Like, you try to make educated guesses based on the information that's around. I do, you do, whoever does. Hey, Claxon was limited last game. Hey, Claxon is practice. Hey, Claxon's sick. Sharp was great last game. Claxon's an unrestricted free agent. Maybe they want to see what he can do. Not, yeah, maybe they want to see what Sharp can do. Well, apparently not. Zero minutes. That is just brutal. Noah Clowney got the backup minutes. Now, I, I like Clowney quite a bit as a prospect. But I saw some Nets people going, yeah, well, they're just in development mode, we'll see what they can get out of their younger guys. Sharp's like 22, and he's barely played. Like, he is the younger guy. So is Clowney, but so is Sharp. It just is a baffling decision by a bafflingly bad coach. And I, I don't care about that for like, oh, well, yeah, I'm not, I think you would be well aware of this. Maybe you're not. That I don't care about coaches making decisions because it impacts my fantasy team. I've never done that in my life for a million years. Never happens. But this, like, why would Sharp get DMP'd? Why? It's not, he's not 30 years old. He's not out of contract. He's not a filler. He is the guy that ostensibly could take over from Claxton as the starting center if Claxton leaves. So why would he not play? What else on this team? Uh, yeah, nothing. Cool. For the Bucks, Lillard. 
Oh, he's cooking at the moment. This is great, isn't it? Seventh ranked player over the last two weeks. 30 points, 12 assists, 5 triples, 2 steals, 50% shooting. Brings up the age-old discussion. Like, taking him at pick 12 and being the 20, 18th best player for the season, is that a bust? Or the fact that he's 7th now and he's actually exceeding his ADP through the playoffs, is that better? I don't know. He's really getting, getting it going, so that's great. A better game from Book Lopez. Still not ideal. 17-5 and five with no defensive stats and no assists. They've got a great schedule next week. I guess we pay a little bit of attention to AJ Green, but how do we know when Doc's going to play him? 14 minutes, 15, 17 points, sorry. No, 15 points with five threes, nothing else. He got hot, he got minutes, that's it. Yanni had 21, 9, and 5, while Leaky Beasley had 16 and 6 in 31 minutes. We hold on to him. And Bob Portis had 6 and 9, 2 steals and block. 30 minutes for Bob, even though it was only Chris Middleton out, so that's interesting. Jay Crowder had 6 in his 30. Just watch them because they do have that good schedule next week. Limited for the rest of this week, but good for the for next week. But yeah, you, your options are going to be Crowder, Connaughton, Beverly, Green. Like, they're pretty yuck. Hold on to your Beasley because that's where... Oh, that sounds rude. Because that's where the value is going to come in of someone who might actually be useful and might be on the waiver wire. Today's episode is brought to you by the good fellows over at eBay Motors. Passion drive, and patience. That is what brings home the winning trophy. It's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything that you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed or power or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because... With eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts that you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit is only available to US customers. Okay, that can bring us on to the next game. It was the Chicago Bulls taking on the Houston Rockets. You would think that I was going to tell you about a lineup change here because, of course, uh, Kobe White was available to return for the Bulls, but no, no, he came off the bench. The Rockets win it 127-117. Torrey Craig stayed starting. He played 25 minutes and had 10 points, while White played 29 off the bench, so it's safe to say there was a bit of a minutes restriction on Jacoby. 13-4-3 for him on 39%. Really, really rough. Considering how awesome he's been all season, the last little bit of time has been pretty bad from Kobe. Um, Dasumu just on an absolute hot streak for the ages. 39 minutes, 35 points, five threes, three steals. This man was basically out of the rotation last season. He was playing like 17 minutes a night to begin this year, and he has just taken full advantage of all the opportunities he's had. He's a clear must roster guy. We've got a little bit of the big big man crossover in this one with the big avocado playing 24 minutes, Andre Drummond. He had nine and eight, while Vooch played 39 minutes for 16, 14, and six. Unfortunately, Vooch continues to be really inefficient. DeRozan got ejected. He had 16 points on 27%, which stinks, but he got ejected for running into Jalen Green. Um, and then Dalen Terry did a little bit of, a little bit of stuff. Dalen Terry is like a Troy Brown sort of a player, or more like maybe a Troy Brown, what he used to be when he came when he first came into the NBA, or a Kyle Anderson type, a 6'7-ish guard forward-ish player that will be like a 7'7-7 seven, seven, seven player, the old slot machine. He's never going to score big, but he can do things sometimes. He's also pretty bad, but the stats can come. Six, seven, and five for Terry here. Good game from the Rabbit Hunter, apart from the shooting. 27% there. He had 12, two, and four. Alex Caruso with two threes and two steals. That's basically what you expect out of Caruso, so that's a W there. For the Rockets, what about two in a row for the big fella? Jacques Landau. 27 minutes, 17, 12, and five, two blocks, 60%. Is this bastard sucked me back in? I don't know. Because I was all for it. 26 minutes, I'm in. Then he plays 20 minutes, two in a row, and I go, ah, I'm out. Then he has seven blocks against the Wizards. I go, ah, I don't know about that. And now we do this, which is a very clear 12-team league line. It's tough because we do see Ime moving back and forth. But one thing we have seen with Ime, basically the whole time since Shingun has been out, he has refused to play Amen Thompson 30 minutes, except for that one game against the Wizards. Amen got 26. He had 15 and 8, which is fine. But we are seeing a reticence to give him the big, big, big minutes. Still holding a men, 
but Landale is a little bit back on the menu. So is Dylan Brooks, who got ejected in that fight because Jalen Green was knocked down by DeMar DeRose, and then Brooks got in and got ejected. Finally, we got a good game out of him, 23 points in 25 minutes with two steals. Are we trusting it? Of course we aren't. That meant we got extra minutes from Aaron Holiday, who had 15 points in 18 minutes. Van Vliet had nine only on 27%, which sucks, but he does all the other stuff. 12 assists, one steal, and two blocks. And it was another good game from Jalen Green. Not his best game, but a good one. 40 minutes, 26 points, 46% on big volume, and then two from four from the line sucks. But he is putting together a very strong run, while Jabari Smith got into foul trouble. Now, some of that is going to be why that reflects into uh, Jock Landau's numbers. Extra minutes for Jock because Jabari played just 22 minutes due to having five fouls. Five and seven for him, a stinker. So keep that in mind again when we're looking at Landau. I don't mind an ad, but there's going to be iffiness. There's going to be ups and downs, and we're seeing Udoka sort of change his mind back and forward quite a bit. And we have to be ready to accept the nonsense that goes on, all the big games that come that we miss out on. That is just what will happen. All right, the next game, the Utah Jazz hosted. No, they didn't. They traveled to take on. The Dallas Mavericks, there were a change or two changes in the Jazz lineup. Larry Markkinen was back, so Bryce Sensabaugh moved to the bench. And Walker Kessler moved into the starting lineup as John Collins was resting because of his facial contusion that he was fine to play through, but then had to sit this one out. Of course he did. Um, Let's take a look at the game because the Mavericks went up 113-97, the final score. Let's focus our attention here on the Jazz. Walker Kessler, 14-9, 100% shooting. That's great. The problem we have is like, what do we do? How do we trust him in terms of playing time and minutes? Well, we can't. What we can trust is Colin Sexton. 20 points, 34 minutes, five assists, Jordan Clarkson remains out. And we got a better game from the speaker, Keontae George. 18 points on 38% doesn't seem great, but 18, two and five are still five of five from the line. That's really good. And Markkinen had 21 points. He just shot horribly. 30 from the field, 11% from three, 21, three and two. We just don't know how much he's going to play and which games is going to be in or out. Sensible was all right, and the five assists, one steal, two blocks is a very interesting combo. He doesn't usually do that, so don't read too much into it. While Taylor Hendricks, very, very much invisible. That is, it's almost turning into a little luxury stashy. You're waiting for a full-on market and out for the year type scenario because he just doesn't touch it. Five points in 28 minutes, only had a steal. Even in saying that, over the last two weeks, he's 150th in 27 minutes. So it's not disastrous, but it's probably more 14-team league stuff for now. Because, again, we just don't know what they're going to do every game. We got 21 minutes of Omer Yurtseven. He played the backup center minutes in this one with John Collins out instead of Michael Potter. Potter had two points in his seven minutes. We had uh, eight minutes of old mate John Jujang. And there was no Clarkson or Collins. And, oh, no, the Jazz didn't win, even though THT got DMP'd. Yeah, he's so, he's so bad, man. Jesus. Anyway, for Dallas. This is it for them. That's the end of their week. If this is your finals week, and you can't drop these players, your league has screwed up. Your commissioner, if he refuses to do it, is just a clown. Really? Clip this bit out. Commissioner, undo the can't cut list. This is a clown move if you don't do it. You have to be able to cut Luca and Kyrie. You have to be able to. You have to. There's just no excuse not to. I'm not listening to some Australian tell me what to do. Do it. Luka Doncic had 34, 9 and 8, 4 steals and 4 threes in 35 minutes. 67% from the line is not ideal. He's been obviously awesome. The two-week schedule's not great here, clearly. And now you can't do anything else. And if you're in your finals, you just got to wait. Well, not in your finals. If you're in your semifinals or first week of playoffs, you just wait for next week. Kyrie, 16, 5 and 7. A little bit inefficient, but otherwise fine. I'll tell you who wasn't fine. And this is an ongoing thing. PJ Washington. Get that garbage out of here. Now, to be fair to him, he had two steals and two blocks, which is a month's worth of production there. But he had six points in 33 minutes, and he is not a 12-team league guy. And with no more games this week, you jack him. Terrence, Terrence Jones. Man, I, I wish. I wish Terrence Jones was back. Derek Jones had 12 points in 24 minutes. Lively did nothing. Tim Hardaway did nothing. But Dan Gafford did. This man now plays 27 minutes a night, apparently, even with a locker room trip. 24, 6, and 5. 91%. Remember Luka Doncic goes on JJ Reddick's podcast. I'm so glad that we got a backup center. And I was like, backup? What do you mean backup? You gave up first round pick here. What do you mean you got a backup? And then he played as a backup. And I go, okay, backup. And I screwed it up because I didn't think that they would see that he should play more. There you go. He did. And now he's rolling. And now what do you do? 
Do you hold him through the rest of this week? I think you would try to, but I also understand if you can't. Because getting extra... If you've got two ads for that roster spot and get three games in, is that the difference between actually being alive next week? In fantasy, of course. You, I hope your health is better than that. It's a, it is a tough one. Everyone else, though, extremely expendable. Lively, Hardaway, Jones, Washington. Exum, who played great last game and went scoreless in 15 minutes here. Cool. That's the end of Dallas for the week. And for many of you, the end of Dallas for the fantasy season. Okay, the next one, the New York Knickerbockers and the Denver Nuggets. The Nuggets win it in the end, 113 to 100. We wanted to see what the Knicks would do. Did Juice McBride only start because it was against Steph Curry and the Warriors last game? Would they go big with Precious Achua to match up against the Nuggets? Well, the answer is, I guess, no or yes, but I don't even know what the question was anymore. McBride started, Achua did not. So what this is, it's, just, it's terrible news for Achua because it means that Tom Thibodeau has actually watched some games Went, oh no, this guy's not it at all. We're not interested in him. So that's Maybe that's a little reductive in terms of where the value is because Precious still played 25 minutes. He had nine points, five rebounds with two blocks. But the fact that in the past when OG was out, he'd played 43 minutes, 41 minutes. Now he's a backup. Makes it a little bit harder to consider him a must roster player. Hartenstein, we, we are so back. We've never been more back. 20 and 8, one steal, two blocks. Let's go. After two months of nonsense, we are back in big minutes or big enough minutes and great production. Jalen Brunson, just some weird games at the moment. Like not, not terrible, which is weird. 26, 2 and 9 on 48% is great, but like two of three from the line, no defensive stats, two rebounds. Okay. And speaking of bad, the new captain of the Ray Felton Triple Double Club, Josh Hart, had two, three, and one in 36 minutes. He didn't play the 40. He didn't shoot. His shooting has been horrendous basically all the way through. I think I said this the other day, that if it wasn't for the fact that he was just generating 44 minutes a night of work and getting rebounds and assists, that he'd actually be really bad. And he didn't do that today. So we hold him. But yeah, that's that's really disappointing. As for Juice McBride, of course, why wouldn't he? He led the team in minutes 44, 11, 3, and 3 with a triple one. He shot okay. He doesn't get much usage. He is worth having a look at. For 12 team leagues, but as always, he's going to be a fringe player. There's going to be ups and downs. There's going to be minutes fluctuations, most likely. And it's going to be about playing the schedule. Where does he fit? Does it make sense on your team at the right time? Not like an absolute no brainer. You plug him in at all points. DiVincenzo, the big ragu, he had 11, 2, and 4, two steals, a block, and three threes. Good numbers there overall. While people are still holding Boyan Bogdanovich for some reason. Get that garbage out of here. He had three points in 14 minutes. It was also the first time we've had a good game out of Alec Burks. Alec Burks. For a long time, 18 points in 21 minutes with three threes and two steals. I would be very comfortable ignoring that. For the Nuggets, the most boring team in fantasy. It's the same stuff. 30, 14, and 11 for Jokic. Michael Ponder absolutely flying at the moment. 31 and 8, not much else. And he shot unbelievably. The headmaster, 23, 6, and 4. But in about the last minute, he did seem to sprain his ankle. Went to the locker room a little bit early. They don't seem to think that it's anything serious. But it's about his fourth or third ankle sprain this season. We have to be a little concerned about that. KCP, what do you reckon he did? Well, he had six points. Two dribbles, then added a steal, and then three blocks. We know what he is. You add him for some threes, you get steals, you got the nice blocks here, and that is it. Well, Aaron Gordon was okay. 10, 4, and 8 for Gordo in 35 minutes, and their bench continues to offer literally nothing. It's the same stuff for this team basically every time that you're out there with them. And that's okay. There's reliability in it, but nothing interesting to talk about in terms of ads or drops or anything like that. All right, so let's do the final game of the night, the Atlanta Hawks and um, up against the Phoenix Suns. There was a um, there was a change in the lineup here because Jalen Johnson was out, obviously, for the Hawks. So he was replaced finally back into the starting lineup uh, with DeAndre Hunter into that position. So let's, uh, let's take a look at what we need to look at in this one. It was a pretty comfortable victory in the end by the Suns. 128-115 was the final score here. So let's look on the Atlanta side. Uh, as my box score just loads up. There we go. DeJounte, 39 minutes, 29, 9, and 10, 4 steals. Poor shooting, but good volume. Well, DeAndre Hunter did DeAndre Hunter things. He didn't shoot well, 39%, but he played 33 minutes. He had 22 points. You got a bonus two steals out of him, and he's just a volume guy that gets scoring. And it's great when it goes in. When it doesn't, you get hurt. But overall, the volume is just going to boost him. We see that Anyekara Kongwu is still limited to under 20 minutes. He did have four fouls, so maybe he would have gone higher. 
Eight and three, a steal and a block. Look, the value for him is clearly there if he plays 25 because there's openings at power forward and at center. We just don't know if he's going to be allowed to or when he's going to be allowed to play them. If you want to take that flyer and do it, they've got a good schedule towards the back end of next week, but it could also just not work out for you because they might just keep him under 20 the whole time. Bogdanovich had 16 points with four threes, Capella 13 and 10, and Vic Krejci played a lot and did nothing. Nine, one and four for the big fella in 37 minutes for Phoenix. Booker had 30 with six, uh, six threes, two assists. Gordon off the bench, 21 points for Eric uh, with four triples and five assists in 24 minutes. He has been putrid for most of this season. I'll happily ignore that, as I'll happily ignore the fact that Royce O'Neal scored 14 points. He only played 15 minutes. He hit four threes, but I need him to have one of the starters out and then feel a bit more confident in using him in most leagues. Nurkic had another trip to the locker room, getting smacked in the face. His efficiency was putrid, 20% from the field, 63 from the line, but he did return. He put up 7 and 10. He has been uh, not very good of late, 184th over the last two weeks. I think we do hold him still well. Uh, Durant, another poor shooting. What is going on with this guy? 19, 4 and 2 on 33%, but he did have three blocks, while Bielo had 12, 4 and 9 to bring us to the end of the uh, of the action. So we're, well, the action is over. What about... Um, what do we do now? Oh, yeah, let's go and do lines of the night. That would be a good thing to do. We'll do the... We'll start off with the monstrous line of the night. Who was the best performer of the day? It's a really good question. I've got the answer. I'm going to give it to Damian Lillard. It was close between him and Ayo Desumu. Lillard had 30 points, 12 assists, and two steals while Desumu shot the ball really well. But we do end up going with Lillard there in the end. The waiver wire line of the night is the next one. Best player who's available in over 50% of leagues. And this guy was great. Jacques Landau. 17 points, 12 rebounds, two blocks. I wish I could feel confident. But Jabari Smith did have some foul trouble. So that limited his overall playing time. But that's two big games in a row from Jock. I'm still not not quite there. Not sure if you want to take a crack, do it. But um, my confidence level in that is pretty low. The young gun of the night is the best performer of uh, first or second year player across the fantasy basketball landscape. We're going to the triple-double legend in Orlando, Paolo Banquero. 20 and 10 with 11 assists. He missed his free throws, sure. But the rest of that stuff is really good. And then lastly, we go to the dud of the night, who was the worst performer of the day, who is highly rostered. And in the end, for the dud of the night, we do go to the New York Knicks. We do go to Josh the Hitman Hart, who had two points. He shot 20%. He had three rebounds. He played under 40 minutes, and he had one assist. We hold on to him, but obviously that is uh, incredibly frustrating considering what we have been getting out of Josh recently. What about the top six players of the day? Who were they? Well, we'll go in there and we'll tell you about it. Number one was Lillard, as I mentioned, closely followed by Ayo Desumu. Behind him was Nikola Jokic, DeJounte Murray, the future MVP, Kyle Kuzma, and the big fella, Jock Landau. What about the top six players rostered in under 50% of leagues? Landau, number one, followed by Eric Gordon. Not that interested there. Dylan Brooks, streaming, maybe. But he'd been putrid most other games. Royce O'Neal, no. Aaron Holiday, extra minutes in this one. I'm not going to care that much. That was with Dylan Brooks ejected. And then Dennis Smith put up some really good defensive numbers and, and assists like he usually does. But that is just a deeper league desperation type move. The top six players in a Yahoo Points League format, it's Jokic, it's Doncic, as it is so often, followed by DeJounte Murray, De'Aaron Fox, and Damian Lillard, the 3D point guards. Oh yeah, what a nickname. And then Paolo Banquero comes in at number six on that list. So just to go and wrap things up, what are the little takeaways here? I think Najee Marshall can, can, be, can at least be considered an ad because obviously we've got the scenario here where uh, Brandon Ingram is hurt and we don't have an update on it yet. I don't think it's going to be back anytime soon, but we'll see. Rashawn Holmes with that little bit of value in Washington. Juice McBride is starting for the New York. And then we can move on from Justin Champagne. If he's going to play 10 minutes, well, we just add when someone else goes down again. And then PJ Washington, no more games for the week. He's not very good anyway. So that to me is a pretty easy move on from scenario. So that is the end of the daily recap show here. Um, don't forget when you're here, when you because you are here right now, go and hit that thumbs up, subscribe, ring the bell, and leave that old comment down below. It's a great way of helping out the show. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.